Hey, good morning. <clears throat> Excuse me, I haven't really talked yet today. This is a, uh, <laughs> this is an oldie but a goodie. This is a Harman Kardon uh, Citation 5. It's a tube power amp. Let me do a little work on this baby today. It's kind of needs some, uh, Little TLC. Seen better days, but that's okay. Still got a lot of kick in her. These are kind of interesting. They're basically uh, just a giant tube power amp it's a stereo. Uh, it's got a power supply transformer and the audio output transformers. This uses uh, originally from the factory. This used the uh, 75. 81 tube on the output, and that's uh, driven by the 6 CG7, that's the phase splitter, and the actual kind of the driver is a 12 BTY7A to be real persnicky. This is kind of an interesting little amp. Um, it actually has a little, there's a little meter right here, it's just a kind of a basic meter. And it's got a number of controls. There's a kind of an AC balance and a DC balance. The AC balance adjusts the plate voltage to the uh, drive phase splitter. And the DC balance adjusts the bias. Um, basically, this is a 6L6. Nothing big. Oh, I got this in for repair. Paying customer. So you could use a good bath. It's just kind of. That's something I've noticed over the years. You get older pieces and you let enough dust settle on them, it starts to build up and it can get kind of yucky. This thing basically is just all painted brown. Well, it does have kind of a snappy bottom. I'm kind of ahead of the game here a little bit. I've already taken the bottom off the thing. Oh. I have to start working out more. It's pretty basic. There's not a lot of uh, pomp and circumstance here. Be that way. This is all the audio section over here. This is all the tube stuff, or excuse me, the power supply stuff over here. It's got a little bit of an unusual power supply. This has what's called a voltage doubler power supply. And just as the name says, it uh, doubles the voltage. Uh, it's uh, one of the pluses is you don't have to have a you know giant high voltage transformer. The transformer can be half of what the output voltage target is the bad thing is it uh, chews into the current capability of the transformer there's a little, few losses there and uh, these two caps um, can uh, gotta be a, kind of in tip top shape to make sure the doubler works actually this works a lot like uh, older color TVs tripler circuit and that type of thing no big deal now this thing actually has kind of an extensive power supply. It's got, if I remember right, there's like four, almost five high voltage taps. I think it starts at 460 volts, keeps working its way down. Um, up here is the uh, negative bias, which is just pretty basic, nothing big. Um, it has the annoying selenium rectifier. Which is kind of weird because uh, this unit has actual diodes. They're actual solid state diodes right there. They're little top hat diodes and they kind of sit in that fuse holder. So, no big deal. Uh, I've been kind of looking at, at this ahead of time. The complaint was that one channel was distorted. And actually, 
discovered a number of little problems with this thing. It's uh, it's kind of old and tired, and looks like it's been kind of neglected. One of the things I noticed is that this selenium rectifier, they've got some nasty habits. Uh, a lot of guys go out of their way to get rid of them because when they burn up, they really emit a toxic odor. It's pretty nasty. It's one of those pungent odors that really lingers too. Uh, one of the bad things about the selenium rectifier is it basically is a stack of rectifiers. It's not a rectifier, it's rectifiers. And that's what every one of these fins is another diode junction for lack of a better word. So as time goes on, they can kind of suck moisture and they just generally are kind of a mess. Anyway, they slowly, the voltage drop across them slowly starts increasing. Well, that's a bad thing in a tube power amp because you're losing uh, negative bias to the output tubes. So it starts out, it's supposed to be, I believe, about 42 volts, and it's dropping back to about 38 volts. So it's losing a little oomph over the, over the years. The other bad thing is uh, when this amp was designed, it probably was designed for... Uh, 115 mains or 117 mains well that's long gone and with the uh, you know we've got 120 some so the output voltage is boosted a little bit that makes the uh, biasing a little bit worse the other thing I noticed is it's uh, it does have a distorted channel and originally I found that um, this, and I kind of hodgepodge this in. This cathode resistor down here, on one side, uh, was just broke open. I mean, right here, I've kind of replaced it. It was 3.3 ohms, and I just put three 10 ohm resistors in parallel. And it, makes a pretty good uh, little substitute. That's not the final fix by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, let me see if we can get a little closer here. Yeah, I know we're backing up, but we're going to back up to go forward. Here we go. This is kind of a, a, a punch board technology. The bulk of the components are mounted on this, these little punch boards, you know, phenolic boards, or pin boards. Uh, one of the other things I noticed too was that um, well after I replaced that resistor I got to wondering why it was um, bad and you can find uh, there's a link to the schematic below hopefully or you can look it up it's no big deal and, and, and I think what the deal is is they kind of put that they put that low value in there and they put a pretty small resistor wattage there. So if something bad happens, that resistor gets blown open. It's kind of a poor man's fuse, for lack of a better word. So I got to wonder why that would be. And the only thing I could think of is either the tube took off on its own, it was getting old and tired, or something else was driving it nuts. And if you look at the schematic. Um, there's a couple kind of interesting controls there. One is the DC balance control. And basically what they do is that's how they feed negative bias into the output stage. And the other thing they've got is an AC balance control that comes from the driver. That, that splits up the high voltage that supplies high voltage to the driver stage on the plates. And I think what's been going on is there's a coupling cap between the, the phase splitter and the output stage. And I think it's been leaking. And it's pulling that around and causing some trouble. And I don't think the customer noticed it. Uh, so I think that's been leaking. And I think it, basically in a nutshell, it uh, threw the bias off and the tube probably red plated or something. And then it blew that, blew that resistor open. The other thing I noticed is that 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 AC balance control is real scratchy. It's, it's bad. It's just about totally shot. And I wonder if that leaking cap uh, has been yanking that side of the balance control. It's funny that the that, that tube 
that side of the AC balance control and that cap are all you know together. So I think that might be what's really really going on. The other thing I discovered too, and this might be this might really be the real cause of this. I don't know. Is I need to fire this up. Is that this resistor here? This is a plate resistor to the uh, kind of the preamp stage. It's 44k, like seven watts. It's kind of an annoying value. Is intermittent, and I've looked at this pretty hard, and I don't think it's. I thought maybe it was the punch board or wire going to it. Originally, I didn't have any real DC to the plate there, and it was kind of cracking and popping. I seem to have lost my bolt here. Here it is. And I kind of came to the... Well, I measured it in circuit, and the, the resistance was almost infinite. But it was still popping, and I was kind of chasing this popping noise around a little bit. Let's see if we can see this. That's the other thing I noticed about this, is this amp tries really hard to hang on to the... Uh, this has been off overnight, and it's trying really hard to hang on to the DC voltage and charge up here. see this it might be open again it might be permanently open I've tinkered with it enough it might just be open now let's do this let's see if we can I got this hooked in my variac I'm kind of glad I brought it up on my variac because when originally when I brought it up it was kind of being a little grumpy uh, basically, I depopulated the tubes out of the thing and worked on it that way a little bit. What are we doing here? Oh, safety first. I want to get a little AC voltage going. Let's plug that baby back in. Okay. The thing that's a little annoying about this is it has a solid state rectifier. See, I think that I think that resistor is open again. Yeah. Oh, you're easy. Yeah, something going on there. See, now it's now it's working. See, I'm moving around. Has quite a bit of DC voltage until the uh, until the tubes heaters kick in and starts getting some conduction. That's one thing I don't care for about this is with the solid state um, rectifier on the high voltage, the plate voltage to the tubes is right there, and I think that's a little hard on the tubes personally. And I'm kind of keeping the old hand on here. That tubes are conducting yet or not? It's starting to. Let's just get her up there. Yeah. There it's dropping down. I don't know if it helps if I turn that light on or not. Not I guess it does. There it's starting to conduct. Something going on there. It's not the wiring, and I've had one side of this resistor. It it is soldered into this little pin. I've had one side out, and when I had it out in circuit, it was open. When I pulled it out, it started working. And it, whatever the problem is with the resistor, it appears to be down in here, and it'll let out a big pop when I there hear it. Yeah, it's 
screw knob. Let's see if we can see it on the meter. I think that body of that resistor is there's actually something wrong. I don't know. It's probably a helical wound. That may actually be an actual wire wound resistor. I don't know. It anyway, it's screwed up. It's gonna be that's actually gonna be fun to replace because it's not physically gonna be fun to replace. It's gonna be hard to match up a little bit. I don't know where I'm gonna find a 44k resistor at seven watts. I'm not. I'm going to probably find a 44k resistor at 10 watts or two resistors at 5 watts or it's going to be a pain. The other thing I noticed here too is this doesn't show up on the camera terribly well. But this resistor is a little dark. And this is um I believe that's one of the plate resistors. Yeah, it's got 400 volts on it. I don't know, it's got some issues. Issues, issues, issues. One of the other issues that's an issue is the uh, DC bias is really low on this. The negative bias. That'll be probably about 42 volts. Letting the tube run a little warm. But I've actually got the Variac turned down a little bit, so it's not. But it's trying to kind of slightly, just in the corners, red plate the thing a little bit. It's running a little warm. <clears throat> I always hear guys belly aching. You know, I can't figure out how to set the bias on my transform or trans. You know, my amp. Or I can't figure out how to figure out what the current is. Well, this is real easy. This is uh, not rocket science. You know, you need to, especially if it has a cathode resistor, you just measure the voltage of the cathode resistor. So, uh, let's, you know, this is for convenience sake, say that's 0.3. And you know that resistance, or you can measure it easy enough. That's 3, so whatever. Uh, 3 into point 0.3 is, what is that about, oh, what is that, oh, 06 roughly, I don't know, I have my calculator, I don't know, you got to figure it out, anyway, you just measure that, you know what the resistance is, you know what the voltage is, so you can figure out what the current is, and then you can adjust the thing accordingly there, you can look it up in the tube book, find out, I think the 6L6 has a, a max is about 30, 30 watts dissipation on the plate, So we got that. We got this other resistor kind of looking a little burned up. Um, that pot's jacked up. There was something else. I don't know. This 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 thing could use a good uh, a good going over. Um, now when you start working with this stuff, uh, be aware that this stuff has high voltage. It's uh, four. I think it's about four hundred. I don't know what four. I'm just gonna pick a place here. Yeah, that's 420 volts. Uh, get your clip weed in the wrong place or get a hold of the wrong thing, you get knocked in your can real quick. And these things have no bones about supplying a lot of current, so be careful. <sighs> One of the things I'm going to do is probably replace that, uh, that selenium rectifier with an actual diode. It'll bump up the uh, negative bias voltage probably a little too much. I'll probably have to put a a little pod in there or adjust it or something. Realistically, I would really like to I this isn't mine so I'm, you know, um, all these caps ought to be replaced probably. It's going to be an annoying little nuisance cuz they're twist lock caps. Basically, they've got little notches cut in the chassis here and they go in and then there's a tab that turns, locks them into place. There's a little work there. This could probably be improved on easily, but uh, the customer seems pretty happy with the way it is. So I need to get back to them and find out what's going on. Um, 
anything I do, you know, on this side of the amp, I probably ought to do on that side of the amp. So the parts I order, I really ought to replace times two, keep the thing balanced up. And it's just a good practice because whatever our place, you know, on one side is gonna probably hot on the heels of being screwed up on the other side. That resistor is the biggest nuisance right now. Uh, I could use some new cathode resistors, probably some nice metal film ones. It's a little tight, not bad. So what I'll do is I'll make a little list of things that, I'll probably make two lists. I'll make the bare minimum cheapskate list. You know, this is the bare minimum to get you going. And I'll probably make the, uh, here's what you ought to do, you know. I guess there's a couple different, what do I say, like modes. There's the repair the amp, there's the kind of the upgrade the amp, and there's you know the bigger update which is a lot of stuff. It could be a little bit intense and you know, a lot of people don't want to throw a lot of cash at this stuff. I can appreciate that. The bad thing though is if you ignore some of this stuff it can come back to bite you. Like you know if uh, the bias screws up on the thing that tubes could go uh, out of control and eat up the output transformer. That would be bad. You can replace the two, you can replace a component, the output transformer. Not so much. I mean you could you could get it rewound somewhere a bit, but it's a little bit annoying. And those that actually that bridge rectifier here probably could use a good replacing. Modernize it. I mean today's modern components are uh, you get the right ones are a lot tougher. Well, it looks like this baby's lived a long and useful life. Well, I think, I don't know. I've been kind of watching this channel and like fire it up. Like I said, uh, the other thing that's going to be a kind of a pain is to replace that one pot. It's uh, kind of a weird chassis mounted affair. Yeah, it's running. Just kind of watching the. being a little hard on the tubes. Get a hold of an older piece like this, you really ought to have it checked out before you just slam it into service. There can be a lot of little time bombs in there and something you you know may have got inexpensively or uh, you know got on a whim or got off of the internet might turn into a pile of junk if you aren't careful. The other thing that's, I personally, I don't really care for this is, it's got this kind of a, oh, it's a little basic meter. There's the switch in the meter circuits to help you adjust the bias on the thing. You really, well, to help you adjust the balance. And there's also a little test point on the, kind of the back of the amp. Let's see, where is it? Right there. This resistor assembly. Basically what you do is you plug that. Uh, well, first thing you do is put a load, a resistive load, on the output side you're testing. Then you plug a jumper from here to the uh, input. You can use an RCA cable. And it supplies AC voltage at 60 hertz, and then you're supposed to adjust the thing. I don't really like that. You know, this is the 21st century. Go get an oscilloscope and do it right. Well, I'm going to let you scoot. I hear the phone a ringing. So when we uh, find out what the customer wants to do, we'll catch up with you. Take her easy. Well, what I was going to show you here is uh, this is uh, the output tube here. Since that uh, selenium rectifier isn't really doing its job very well, um, the tube is turning a little bit red. It's not killing it, but it's not doing it any good either. We're about 
34 volts on the negative there. You can see it's it's turning just a little bit red. Let me turn the light out and you'll really see it. Yeah. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bypass that selenium rectifier with a uh, resistor and a solid state diode. And you'll see that baby cool off a little bit. That's about, what is that, about 40 volts? Yeah. You can see it's it's quieting down a little bit, or what I call. And to what we'll bump that up to that's 44 volts. There you can see the tube is really starting to kind of simmer down. There's just a little bit of a glow. And keep in mind that camera is pretty sensitive in the dark on this kind of stuff. You can see it just barely. And we'll take the diode away and let it run on the selenium rectifier again. Which I think was 30, 34 volts. And you can see it coming back to life there. Not doing it any good. Now in the scheme of things, I don't know, this is me maybe. But I'm just going to put a little bit more negative bias on the thing to kind of quiet it down. That's the 40 volts. Negative 40 volts. Yeah. Okay, we've turned the light back on. We've done enough monkeying around. And you can see when you have just some ambient light, you kind of hard pressed to see that. And that's still in the, this, this thing is sitting in the shadow, even though it doesn't look like it. Uh, you can see how that'd be a little hard on the tubes. It's running a lot of extra current, turning it into heat. Um, on the flip side of that coin, uh, personally, if you run the tubes a little harder, leave a little skin behind, um, traditionally the amps sound a little better, but it's a perceptional thing. Really ought to do what the tube manufacturer recommends. And uh, actually, look at the plate dissipation. What, what's happening there is that the plate can't dissipate all the heat that's crossing through there. And that's a combination of how much current you're drawing and how much voltage is on the plate. Since uh, we're running this at about 120 some volts, uh, and it was probably designed for. I don't know, 117 or 115, there's a little bit of an issue. The other issue there, I think I mentioned this earlier, is that that selenium rectifier is getting a little tired. and it's In the blueprint, I think it shows that it ought to have about 42 volts negative bias. Well, we're a long ways from that. I think that was, what did I say, it was 33? 34? Yeah. So we're missing about 8 volts negative bias. It's quite a bit. And it could be a couple other things too. The filter cap could be getting all tired or it might be leaking and, you know, screwing the uh, power supply up. A little investigation would be in order. These are all things you need to really investigate. If you're going to jack with these tube amps, uh, you really need to have your game together. And it's kind of funny. It's, again, my opinion. There's some people that think they have their game together and they're a lot of, a lot of hot air. <sighs> Get out there where the rubber meets the road. Anyway, I just thought I'd show you that, just show you the difference there, what's going on with the different biases and what can be lurking. you got to use your eyes and your ears. Actually, you got to kind of use your nose. When I fired this up, I thought, that thing smells a little warm. So I started looking around real hard. 
this thing could probably use a really a big overhaul, but uh, well, like I said, we'll see what the customer wants to do. Well, I'm going to shut you off here because I want to actually play a little music through this. And no music on YouTube for me. Oh, I'll get in big trouble. <laughs> anyway, take it easy. Have a great day.